Hello, everyone. Um, this is Erin. I am the Education Director at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, and some of you have been with us before for Doodle Bugs, so you know who I am. But I'm going to take this minute to mention that starting this Friday, we have new exhibitions opening for the fall at the Museum of Art. So if you haven't been in in a while, come in after Friday to, well, maybe on Friday, but definitely after this Friday, and you're gonna to get to see all new stuff. And this fall, I thought instead of focusing on one of the small exhibitions, I would take the whole museum and hunt for animals. That's right. There's a boatload of animals all over in all of the galleries. Bless you. So today we're going to talk about a horse named Steve. And I thought I would show you some horses that are in all the artworks that are up on display at the museum right now. But before we get to that, would you guys introduce yourselves for the rest of the group? Miss Alicia, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone in case they don't know you? Sure. Hi, I'm Alicia. I'm the Youth Services Librarian at Hiawatha Public Library. We've had an interesting morning because our badge operated doors, your doors operate on badges. Oh, well, you're, they're not working. So we have the doors propped open like with chairs and things. Oh no. <laughs> so don't hesitate to come in. It's getting work done now. Anyway, I'd love for you to come to the Hiawatha Public Library. Thanks for being here uh, today. And thank you, Erin, always for all you do for us. Thank you. Don't you love technology? Well, hopefully they'll get that fixed so you're not all <laughs> locked out. <laughs> all right. How about everybody at Sheena's house? Would you like to introduce yourselves? Malena. You're Malena. That's Madeline. This is Madeline. She, I'm Sheena. She's being, Madeline's being shy. That's okay. We're all allowed one of those days every once in a while. <laughs> It happens all the time. Thank you for joining us again today, ladies. It's good to see you again. Um, and Miss Renee, I know that we don't see your picture anymore, but would you unmute for a second and let everybody know who you are and where you're from? Sorry, Erin. No, that's okay. <laughs> I am, I am Renee. Um, here, I'll take this off really quick. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Ms. Renee. It's so good to see you again. You too. Um, I'm at our technology station, and I'm the only one here today so working, so I will just watch when I can, and, and yeah, glad to see everybody, though. Yay, it's good to see you. It's been a long time. Very long time. <laughs> How's progress on the Marion Public Library now? It is making quick progress. Um, we're still looking to open next uh, March. So yeah, if you have a chance, come take a look because it's going up pretty quickly. Oh my goodness, that's so exciting. Yeah. Yay. And maybe by <laughs> next March, we can you know get together again in person without masks. <laughs> I, I sure hope so. <laughs> that would be wonderful. It would be really nice. Yes. Thank you, Miss Renee. You're um, welcome. Yeah. How about everybody at Oscar's house? We have you muted right now. So if you can hear me, if you just hold down your space bar, it'll unmute you long enough that you can introduce yourself. And I do have something in the chat. Oh, there we go. That's from Renee. Oscar might not be able to unmute depending on how they're logging in today. So um, if you can go ahead and interrupt me anytime, um, but in the meantime, we're gonna get started. So just a reminder, make sure that you have your art making supplies handy. In just a little bit, we're gonna do that. Um, you're gonna need scissors. I bought my big scissors today. And I'm gonna be using tape, but you can also use glue or a glue stick or whatever you've got around the house that might help you stick things together. And you're gonna need some paper and then maybe something to make marks. So like crayons or markers or colored pencils, 
like Melina has. Yes, Miss Melina. Um, we we do we are going to have tape. Just Madeline gets a little carried away with the tape, so we don't have it out right now. I know how that goes. We all get a little carried away with tape sometimes. It's good. It's fine. Um, let's see here. And Miss Alicia says she apologizes. She has to run away temporarily, but we're going to keep going. So I am going to switch over to share my screen so I can show you some pictures of the horses that we have at the museum right now. So here we go. Hi everybody. During the live recording on Zoom of our Doodlebugs class, Art and Nature, we had a little trouble with the slides I wanted to show. So I thought I would do that now and show you some of the horses that we have on display at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. Our first one is a piece by Grant Wood. If you're familiar with our museum, you'll know a little bit about Grant Wood already. We have the largest collection of Grant Wood artwork in the world. So we have a lot of his artwork and there's always some of it on display. And this is one of that's in our permanent exhibition. This one's called Study for Agricultural Science Mural. Um, a study is kind of a practice run that an artist might do to kind of figure out um, what they would like the final piece to look like when it's done. So this is kind of a practice piece. Um, but that said, it's still pretty cool because it has two horses in it. And one of them is even a polka dot horse. And I think it's really cool because it looks like Grant painted a gray horse and then loaded his paintbrush up with a lighter gray, maybe even a whitish bluish gray, and then just kind of smooshed his paintbrush onto the gray background of the horse to give it polka dots. Our next piece is another Grant Wood. This one is called Overmantle Decoration because it was made to go over the mantle of a fireplace. This one is really big. If you come and see it in the museum in real life, it is very large, um, much like the last one actually. And this one has a very different kind of horse. It looks like there is a gentleman riding on a very sleek looking, uh, shiny black horse, maybe coming home from being away and his family is there to greet him. But I thought this horse was so cool, not just because it looks like it's so very shiny, but also because it looks like he's been going very, very fast because it looks like it's kicking up dust behind it. I thought that was kind of neat. Our next piece is another Grant Wood. This one is called Adoration of the Home. Um, he painted this giant mural to be sort of an advertisement for the city of Cedar Rapids. Um, Grant is showing the different walks of life um, and the different types of people and different types of uh, businesses that were in Cedar Rapids at that time. And not surprisingly, agriculture or farming is a big part of that story. So Grant included a horse. This next piece is another Grant Wood. This one is called Spring in the Country. We can tell that it's the country because it doesn't look like a city. Um, there's a lot of agricultural things happening here. There's a farm in the background. There are crops being planted because that's what you do on a farm in the springtime. And Grant was born and raised on a farm, so he knew a lot about farm life, but this was even kind of more um, old fashioned than he might have been used to. Um, in the 1940s, people were using a lot of machinery to do farm work, but um, when he was a child, they probably would have been using something more like this. You'll see their horses in the background, probably pulling a big, heavy piece of machinery that's too heavy for people to pull. So they had horses doing that work. And I love that Grant kind of tucked them back behind a hill. So you almost miss it unless you're really looking closely. 
This next piece is by an artist named Richard Penny. Um, this is a piece that he created to sort of tell the story of one of his favorite books, The Canterbury Tales. Now, this was a book that was written hundreds of years ago, um, and it's a collection of short stories. Each tells the story of one of this, these characters um, that are all traveling together over a long distance. And because this was several hundred years ago, all these characters were traveling on horseback. And so Mr. Penny decided to retell the story of all these characters in sort of a sculpture that's been flattened onto a wooden surface so he could hang it on the wall. Um, this type of thing is called a ba relief, B-A-S relief. Um, relief means it just kind of sticks out toward you a little bit. So it's mostly flat, but there are parts of it that stick out farther than others. And I thought I would show this to you because there is a different horse for each of the different characters in the story. Um, Mr. Penny has made each of the horses a little bit different. So if you get a chance to see this in, in person, if you come to the museum and see it, um, you'll have to take a peek at all these different horses and see how they're the same and how they're different. This piece is by an artist named Mildred Pelzer. Um, if you come see this one at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art in real life, it's huge. It's taller than me. I think it's taller than most people. Um, and there's so many details in it that you can really stand in front of this painting and look at it for a very long time and see all kinds of things up close that you'd probably miss when you're looking at it on a screen like this. But I thought I would show it to you because there are quite a few horses in this piece. Um, it's called Symphony of Iowa 1833 to 1933. So it tells the story of Iowa over a hundred years and part of that story, not surprisingly, involves horses. So if you take a peek at this, right away you'll notice horses right in the middle, dead center, they're kind of the focus. They're on the top of the hill, but there are more horses if you look a little closer. These horses are doing some of the agricultural or, or farming work, um, but there are some more down here that look like they're being guided by some Native Americans. And up here in the very far background, you can hardly tell what those horses are doing, but I love that Mildred shows us that they're farther away by making them look a little hazy. They're teeny tiny, so obviously that makes them look farther away. But they're also kind of tinted blue, and they're kind of um, hazy. You don't see as much detail. It, it almost looks misty in the background. And so I thought I'd show these to you because it's not every day you see paintings of blue horses. However, Mildred has lots of horses in her artwork, including some more blue horses to show that they're in the background. This is another one of Mildred's pieces called Marion, Iowa, 1890. And if you look very closely, you not only see those blue horses in the background again, they almost look exactly like the last painting, but you've got some other horses in the foreground closer to us that are less blue. And one last piece from Grant Wood. This one is called Place de la Concorde. Um, this is from his earlier days when he was learning to paint in the Impressionist style in Paris. And that's why it's not as detailed. You don't see as many fine lines and details. For example, you don't actually see a lot of the the expression on the face of this horse, you can see the, the main details, like where his eyes are, where his mouth is, but you don't see a lot of the other details that we see in his other paintings of horses. But this one is a 
special horse. This was part of a sculpture that Grant found in France of a Pegasus or a winged horse. So even though it's not a, a unicorn with a horn like our story in our Doodlebugs class, I thought you might like to see a painting in our museum that has a Pegasus. So put your mask on sometime and come down and check out all these horses at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. We are going to read our story. Has anybody ever seen this book before? Oh, good. I like to share new stuff. It's called A Horse Named Steve by Kelly Collier. And I got this because you can tell how shiny, from the library. So I know that they have a copy. Most libraries will, and if they don't, if you ask them really nicely, they'll order it for you. But you can check this out anytime you want. There's actually a sequel. She wrote this book, and then after this book came out and everybody liked it so much, she wrote another one with Steve the horse in it. So check it out. There's not just one Steve the Hor horse named Steve book. <laughs> Malena, are you gonna watch through the tiny hole in your paper cone? Okay. A Horse Named Steve by Kelly Collier. This is one of those fun times where the author is also the illustrator. That doesn't happen all that often anymore. This is Steve. Steve is a fine horse, but he thinks he could be finer. He wants to be exceptional. That means special. Steve has heard that some horses get to wear ribbons. Sigh. One day, while walking through the forest, Steve stumbles across a beautiful gold horn just lying there. Can you believe it? Ribbon schmibbin, somebody says from the shrubberies. But look at, you can see his little golden horn on the ground there. Mm -hmm. How lucky is this guy? I love these illustrations of Steve, by the way. He's such a funny looking horse. That's one of my favorite parts about this book. Steve smells the horn. Sniff, sniff. Mm, Steve tastes the horn. Nom, nom. Finally, Steve bites the horn. I wonder what he's trying to do. And then Steve knows this horn will make him exceptional. Woot woot. Down here, he's clapping his hooves together. <laughs> Steve straps the horn to his head. Hmm. Too bad Steve's horn didn't come with Velcro. Over, under, around, and through. He's trying to tie a bow knot, just like you do with your shoelaces. And gallops off to show his friends, whoosh. Check it out, he's talking to this little guy. I'm so fancy, pretty amazing, huh? Look at all his friends he's chatting with. And I like that you can see his little horseshoe footprints going from friend to friend. Way better than a ribbon. Exceptional, don't you think? Don't you love it? <laughs> He's talking now. So I just saw it and thought, Steve, you could really do something with this. And I'm so glad I did because I'm an exceptional horse now. Bob, you should really find a horn too because you're looking kind of ordinary. And then this must be Bob down here. He says, oh, brother. I don't know if you can see it all that well. He's all proud. 
bragging to his friends. And it doesn't look like his friends are all that impressed. Although back here in the background, it looks like some of them are finding other things to tie to their heads like he did. But Steve says, Bob, I don't see a beautiful gold horn on your head. You are not exceptional. He says, huh? Do you see what happened to his horn? It's not on top of his head anymore. Where'd it go? <laughs> yep, it slid down. Oh no, where's my beautiful gold horn, cries Steve. It says, this is one shocked horse. You can tell because his eyes are really big and his mouth is open. <gasps> also, did you notice what Bob has on his head instead of a golden horn? <laughs> He's got a little branch on his head. Yes, just like you. Steve looks everywhere for his beautiful gold horn. Under here? Nah. Up here? Nope. It's no use. Steve can't find his beautiful gold horn anywhere. And he says, Whoa. he's very upset, which is just silly because we can see it. He says, cry, cry, cry. Steve is devastated. And it says, that means really, really bummed. Mr. Mopey Pants, he's dragging his feet. That's how you know he's really sad. <laughs> he's so silly. All that crying has made Steve thirsty, so he stops for a drink. Seriously dry mouth here, he's saying. Then, lo and behold, that means, oh my goodness, look at that. There in the water is his beautiful gold horn. He sees it reflected in the top of the water. Steve reaches for his horn, but he can't quite grasp it. So he reaches farther and then a wee bit farther. What's gonna happen? Sploosh! Hey, watch my branch, says Bob. He's getting splashed. Oh, he went too far. Now he's in the water. Poor Steve. He's hornless and drenched. That means really, really wet. Still no luck with the horn, huh, says Bob. Too bad it was really exceptional. Now his friends have special things strapped to their heads and he doesn't. Uh-oh, here come the waterworks. Mm. There are his friends. I don't know what the rabbit's name is, but it looks like maybe he has a rock stuck to his head. I can't really tell. And there's Bob with his branch. But suddenly, Steve notices something. Hey, wait a minute. There they are. Can you see what else his friends have strapped on their heads? His little duck friend right there, it looks like an acorn. He says, wait a minute. All of you look exceptional, said Steve, but I just realized that I look exceptionally different. And that means Steve feels special again. Oh, I like this guy with like a whole shrubbery on his head. Do you see that? <laughs> 
I love the natural look he's got going. This is the bunny talking. Very stylish, says the owl. The owl who also has a branch on her head. How does he do it, says the squirrel. <laughs> Steve, he is such a trendsetter, this guy. <laughs> So did his gold horn that he thought made him look so special, did that really make him special? That's not what made him special. He's special cause he's Steve. So I thought it would be kind of fun, even though this isn't gonna make us any more special than we already are, to strap something to our heads, just like Steve and his friends did. So if you were um, looking at the invitation for our class today, you knew to go outside and find something cool that you could use instead of a gold horn, because I'm guessing you probably don't have a gold horn laying around. So I went out yesterday and picked up some stuff and weirdly, I don't know how this happened, but all the stuff that I managed to find was all purple. I don't know how I did that, but I have this really cool purple leaf, but I don't think I can use it because it's really wobbly wobbly. It won't stand up on its own. So I don't think it's going to work very well. And then I found a teeny tiny purple and green leaf. that's really cool. But again, it's pretty floppy. So maybe not that one. And then I found this purpley red leaf that I think is really cool, especially when it's in the sunlight outside, it looks bright red, but it's a little crunchy and it keeps breaking off. I don't know if you can hear that. It, it's a little crunchy and I'm a little afraid that I'm gonna break it. So the last thing I found was this weird little flower. It's kind of purple and white. So bad. And it's a little floppy too, but I think it'll stand up okay. Yes, Miss Melena, do you want to show us what you found? Well, it looks like most of your things are leaves. A lot of mine are leaves. Mm -hmm. I have these leaves, these leaves. Oh. <laughs> and some marigolds that I grew by myself. Wow. Oh, those are cool. And if and it's too big to use, you can always snip off a part it? of it. Marigold teams. Oh, how cool. Now, I was going to say, in the book, Steve only used one thing. And all of his friends, they only used one thing. But if you want to, if Why you find lots of cool things, yeah. you can use lots of cool things. So what you're gonna need is to get out your piece of paper or pieces of paper, whatever you find. I'm gonna lean over because I dropped mine on the floor. And I already started mine, but this is how we're gonna stick them. We're gonna make a headband out of our paper. So I cut my paper into strips the long way, but you can cut yours the short way, whatever you wanna do. And all I did was like, I'll show you, I did. A couple of really long, short thin, but not too thin strips. And then I taped the two ends together. I kind of overlapped them and taped them together so that they would bend. And eventually I got a really long piece. And then you have to kind of measure. So strap it around your head and make sure that it goes all the way around and overlaps a little bit so that you can make a crown that goes all the way around your head, a big headband. So it might take two pieces of paper. It might just take one piece of paper. It might only take a part of one piece of paper. Make sure it's big enough though. You want it thick enough that you can stick something to it like I'll show you with my breaky leaf. We're gonna stick it on like this so that when it's on your head, it'll be right on your forehead, just like the animals in the book. Melina, is that piece of paper gonna be wide enough to stick something onto? 
because some of your leafy things are kind of big. And if you have a really big thing, they're kind of heavy. So you may want a thicker layer. So when I had mine all stuck together, see, I don't know if you can see. But now it can't. There's where it's taped together in the center. Like what you did with that, you've oh, got to cut another one. I've got an idea. And it fits all the way around. When you have that done, when it's still flat like this, then that's when you get to decorate. So you can color on it with your crayons or markers or colored pencils or whatever. Do you know what I found to use around the house? What? Washi tape. I don't know oh. if you guys play with washi tape ever. If you're into scrapbooking <laughs> or things like that, they yeah. have washi tape with lots of different designs on it. This one has butterflies. We I just have had these laying around. But this is the one that I found that I thought would be oh, cool because it almost looks like trees in the forest it. or we maybe mountains. Put... Yeah. That's why I picked it. What do you want to put on here? Should we put this leaf? So I decorated all of my strips. Here, right here. And then you take this across. If I wanted to, I could still color on top of that though. Because I've got markers and crayons and colored pencils. Okay, in okay, then, then you can, you can make it as fancy as you want. Ooh. More, more, yep. more, more, more. If it's okay. Stop. When I'm ready, I will tape that together in the back of my head. But while it's still flat is the easiest time to work on it. So while you color or tape stuff together or whatever you got going on, I will show you the next step so that you know what to do when you're mm -hmm. done decorating. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've decorated my strip. Like I said, I could do more, but for time today, I'm not going to do that right now. And I'm going to take my little purple flower, this weird little fl fluffy, fuzzy thing that I found. Here we go. And I'm just going to place it right on top of the colorful side of my strip of paper Ooh. and tape it down. That's all. Really easy. Do you want to color on here at all? No. Okay. If you're using okay. glue or a glue stick to do this part, you may have to wait until it's a little bit dry before you put it on your head. And wet glue takes a little while to dry. So if you don't want to wait, tape is a better option. So there, can you see my, my little purple flower? He's sticking on there, but he's kind of flopping forward almost like Steve's horn. <laughs> I might have to add some more tape to make sure he stands up better. Look at this. Look at, look at Ooh. Are you going to color it in? Kind of yeah. Oh, Miss Madeline. That looks awesome. Well, it's taped plenty. I'm going to add a little bit more tape to my flower so it doesn't fall off. Mm -hmm. Good idea. I'm a little nervous because it's a little bit floppy. Right here. If you have a leaf like I found that's kind of floppy, just let it sit out for another day or two and it'll dry right up and then it'll stand up by itself. I think that's what I might do with my leaves because they're really pretty. I don't want to throw them away. There we go. My little flower. She's real floppy. There we go. Nice job. I wouldn't put any more because then you're good taking my hair. Nicely done. Well, you know what piece there are you we go. Put? I put some tape behind it so it stands up a little bit better. So once you get your things from outside oh attached to your headband, then you just put your headband on and stick it together in the back. Then you can wear your headband around, much like Steve's awesome horn and all the other forest animals' awesome things they found. Let's see. I'm doing this without looking, by the way, so I probably taped my hair, but that's all right. <laughs> How's that look? It's good. good. <laughs> so I yeah, definitely want to see what you guys do. I want to see yours when they're done. 
Are you done with yours, Madeline? Are you going to color it or is that it? And like I said, you guys picked up more than one thing from outside. So if you want to, you can stick things all the way around your headband. You have all kinds of cool stuff. I have an idea for you, Madeline. Madeline, that looks cool. I'm gonna do mine like this. Ooh. A pattern of brown and green. I like it. It's very natural colors too. They're the same colors you'd see when, if you went outside. I like this. Color. I'm using cocoa and olive. I have a set of 100 colored pencils. Don't you love that? I love when I get a set with a whole bunch of colors in it. Wow. They look awesome. Yeah, I do. Here, we can do three petals on that side. Watch this. Okay, while you guys are working, I'm going to try to figure out my share screen and see if I can't make this work this time. <laughs> yeah, look at that, and then we'll do three on the other side, too. Not my piece of tape. I see you got your piece of tape. Let's see. Oh, and also, I already got uh, an early birthday present. You did. What is that? Actually, basically two. I got what did you a get? razor scooter. <gasps> oh, we, that's cool. Madeline got a pink razor scooter, too, since we were kind of fighting over the one blue one. That happens. And I also got a brand new big bike that has a kickstand, but the kickstand will lock into place when it goes down. It's a little Ooh, stick. that's very handy. How awesome. So you, since you got your presents early, you can ride around on your pink razor scooters while it's still your birthday or even before your birthday. Look, Madeline, look. Uh-huh. Look, I've mind. already wrote it a few times. <laughs> and now I can ride my bike without training wheels. <laughs> oh, look at you. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to try to share my screen. Do you guys see a PowerPoint with a drawing of a horse on it? No, nope, nope. it's still doing the, <clears throat> oh like gosh. It's, it's thinking about it. I wonder what is happening there. It's so strange. That hmm. looks great. Look at Marlena. Look at Madeline. <gasps> Ooh, that's pretty. That is looking really cool. Oh, you put one on the back too? Good. And since we can't see you, Renee, I'm assuming that you're already wearing a headband with a really cool something or other on it. I know you are. <laughs> All right. This needs to put one more leaf on. Okay. Get Any leaf progress leaf. on our share screen at all? No, nope, it's, it's still... still doing the same thing. What on earth? I tell you, you guys. Beautiful. Do we have another tiny leaf like this? Okay. 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 Here, 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 here. Not, not one that's that tiny. I like these. But this one's nice. Also, Miss Alicia, I appreciate your Monty Python reference to the shrubberies. I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try opening. That was your reference, by the way. I, I know. I love those movies. I love Monty Python. Mm, let's see. I wish I could show you the horse pictures, you guys. The, there are so many different kinds of horses on display in the artwork in the galleries right now. There's even one with wings. So he's a Pegasus. 
you know, Steve with his gold horn looks like a unicorn, but we have a Pegasus at the museum. It's a painting of a statue of a Pegasus. Ooh. Melena, I'm going to put you on the big screen so you can show everybody. Uh, 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 uh. Or, you know, I can take a second to do this because it's taking too long. Spotlight for everyone. There, can you show them again? Those look amazing. Mm -hmm. I, Here's Madeline. The light from the window might be. Stopping. I have the same problem, but I love <laughs> the green and the brown. It almost looks like you have mountains with your leaves in front of them. Yeah. That's cool. And now and I'm going to make a pattern with marigold seeds. Awesome. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool. Yeah, it does look mm -hmm. kind of neat. They're going to be, ooh, that's really cool. I never knew what mar marigold seeds look like. That's really yeah. nice. You can make little star patterns. <laughs> Miss Alicia says I look really cool and that I'm giving her a 60s vibe. So <laughs> peace and love. I almost put um, little piggy tail hey. top knots in my hair today, and I thought that would look really silly with my headband on. So I'm keeping it long and flowy. Madeline, I can't wait to see what that looks like when it's done. It's going to be amazing. It almost looks like polka dots with your little marigold petals. I'm jealous, too, because I'm allergic to marigold, so I can't touch them. Oh, you are? That's yes. I'm allergic to all the flowers, basically all the plants ever. Mm. I found out that I was allergic to marigolds specifically when I had some tea with marigold petals in it. Oh, no. And it was not pleasant, not for anybody involved. I was very itchy and red and weird looking. So <laughs> I'm jealous that you get to play with them. Well, they stink. So I guess that could yes. be... They say. do really yeah. stink, um, but that's, <laughs> that's why good mommy's like, let's get them, get them back outside. I think they smell good. They stink on purpose. That's how they keep the bugs away. Yeah. Marigolds right. have magical powers. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. My grandma puts mar plants marigolds around her garden to keep the bunnies out. That works too. Yep. Plus, they, they attract butterflies, so they keep most of the icky bugs away, like mosquitoes, but they attract butterflies, and that's awesome, because we love butterflies, yeah. and bumblebees. Bumblebees need them, too. There. And then we get your... <gasps> Madeline! There, here's the ones you put on, too. Oh, they're all the way around. That is super cool. Those are the flower petals. One more thing. Yeah. Yeah. They I look took like tiny little hearts. That's just so took... cute. <gasps> They're I so need cute. To put one more thing on. What do you want to put on? Where is the? What do you need? You can put as many things on as you want to. That's the best part about this. Some tape here. You need some tape there. Yeah, that tape is very. <laughs> there you go. Mm, the allure mm. of adhesive tape. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you made a star. I'm going to make four stars. That's such a fun idea. I love that. So you're alternating. I'm making a pattern. You can have this one. Oh, well, thank you. A pattern. Miss Alicia had to go. She's at the library. So she's going to help um, a family that's at the library right now. So if anybody has any questions or you want to share one more time before we go, now is a good time. 
And like yeah. always, I'm going to tell you, if you want to send us pictures of the final completed art project when you're done, you can send them to the museum. Like you can email them to me or you can share them with us on Facebook or Instagram. We would love to see how they turn out. Did you guys happen to see? I know you guys sent me pictures of yours last time. Um, did you guys see them online after that? I didn't. I forgot to go look after the fact. I'll have to check. Um, my colleague who does all of that, um, all of our social media stuff, she had um, a knee surgery on Monday. So she's uh, working from home and she's taking it as easy as she can while she's recovering. So it might be a while this time before she's able to post anything, but at least we'll have it out there sometime. Where some would point. it be on the website or like, is there a... It'll most likely be, bless you. Bless you. It's those marigolds, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, it'll most likely be on Facebook and Instagram. She usually okay. posts on both places at the same time. So you can see okay. them either place. Okay. Madeline, you got good scissor skills working. Good for you. She really and does. You, yeah. Have you been practicing? Oh, yes. We've we like got to yellow, practice. We've got yellow confetti paper all over it now. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, she, she does. She has pretty good control. So that's one of my favorite stages when you do, um, child development in in art classes one of the early stages of scissors uh scissor skills is confetti so <laughs> you uh you make lots of confetti and then you turn the confetti into an art project and it's really cool like what well like you can brush glue all over the top of a piece of paper and then sprinkle mm -hmm. your confetti on top of it and it'll stick yeah. Sounds pretty. That's really fun. I also like to make um, confetti. It looks like confetti, but it's not really confetti. Um, when you splatter paint onto a piece of paper, it looks like there's confetti in your picture, but it's dry. Once the paint dries, nothing will fall off. <laughs> Sometimes with real confetti, it falls off. All right. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys show us one more time what you're working on before Good. we say goodbye. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing. And I think I'm gonna use a little bit of Madeline's confetti. Ooh, make sure, make sure Madeline says that's okay though before you do that. Madeline, can I use some of your leaf confetti? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take that as a tacit <laughs> agreement. <laughs> She said sure. She did end up saying That's sure. so nice. She even handed some to you. Madeline, do you want to show us your crown before we say goodbye? Show, your, show it again before we say bye-bye. Oh, she just needs to put one more thing. She's She's got a plan. Working. I'm interrupting. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us again, you guys. It's always good to see you. I'm excited for next. Oh, Finish. Uh, that looks awesome. Nice. Yeah. That is pretty Finish. fabulous. Um, next month, we are meeting on Wednesday, October 27th. So it'll be right before Halloween. And we are going to be talking about night animals because, you know, Halloween. Yes, Miss Milena. Could I maybe have a little birthday chat? <laughs> <laughs> me. Um, I will definitely be uh, logged on a little bit early. So if you want to <laughs> join us a few minutes early, you can show us all your birthday stuff. All right. And you know what? I'm just going to say this. I love Halloween. And so if we get together next month and you happen to be wearing your Halloween costume, <laughs> I won't be mad at that. I will pretty much adore that. So if you want to wear your costume next month, go for it. I want to. I oh. hope so. It's going to be so much fun. I might even dress up too, you guys. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Oh, I'm going to sign off. Party doodle bugs. <laughs> well, that's what it will be if you show up in costume.
I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying it would be amazing. So um, thank you again for joining us. Oh, yay. You're going to put your crown on before we say goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.